Storytelling is, it's necessary for our existence, period. If we don't have storytelling, we don't have medicine. We don't have storytelling, we don't have identity, we don't have language, we don't have history. We don't have ways of learning about ourselves. We don't have, no, I mean, storytelling tells us who we are. We read our DNA, but we could actually just be sitting down with our grandparents and asking them, tell me about what happened to you from day one. Um, it's in our body, but it's also in the stories. And that story is in the artwork, and that story is in the actual writing. It's necessary um, for us to continue to thrive in the world and um, learn about who we are and continue to be sustainable. Um, I'm Anel Flores, and I'm from, I like to say that I'm from um, the space between Brownsville, Texas and San Antonio, Texas. I was born in Brownsville, but I spent most of, well, both my life here and there. Almost 25 years, I've been creating stories out of imagery and out of words. And um, the work I'm exhibiting is from my graphic memoir titled Pintada de Rojo, which is painted red. Uh, but this work will really explore from childhood to today, but dealing with the idea of my body and how my body has been, um, has experienced sexual abuse, how that has affected me as a queer person, how that has affected me as a butch woman, um, as a masculine of center person. Um, so that's, that's what I'm doing, the broadside, which is part of the memoir. As a, young, as a young person, I was totally closeted. I mean, as a kid, I was closeted in a traditional family, um, very Catholic, wonderful family, um, but completely closeted, very traditional, very, you know, gonna get married, gonna have your babies, gonna have, you know, the whole thing, the whole heteronormative model, um, which works for some, uh, did not work for me. So as an artist, I started to create imagery and write poetry and stories that were, that didn't portray gender. I didn't want to he or she, I just wanted it to be very vague. So I started to write those stories, paint those pictures, and then as I progressed, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old through college, I started to um, add gender, add maybe the frontal, you know, body, uh, more imagery. And then as I just progressed as an artist, I started to create imagery that wasn't out there and stories that weren't being told, um, stories about um, immigration, stories about LGBT immigrants, trans immigrants, um, LGBT people in general, and creating those books, those stories, that imagery was super important to me because it was not available for me. It still is not available, so that's what pushes me every day to continue doing that work. So my goal is to create imagery where I can have young LGBTQIA folks intrigued and also their stories being told, they feel like they actually have something to look at, models, not that my model, the way I draw it is the way to go, but it's something that is there and it gives some kind of validation to existence. Um, I know that's a huge, huge problem in the LGBTQIA community is validating an existence, validating your love, your relationship, your family, your body, your shape of your body. Um, that validation is not portrayed and so that's why there's such a high number of suicide. And so that also drives me to just make art, make imagery that is gonna make someone feel like, oh, I belong in that, even in that small, very tiny drawing. I belong there, so I might belong here. And I don't wanna go anywhere. And I wanna be a little bit stronger. So that's why I create work. To be honest with you, I've been going to the McNay since I was a kid. It used to be the art institute. There was an art institute. Um, and as an art educator in the public schools, I used to take my students to the McNay. So I used to go all the time. So it was safe in that respect. Um, for me, but I never felt like it was a place, honestly, that was accessible to the LGBTQIA community and San Antonio in general, and women. So like, in the layers are deep. I mean, when I go to the, when I go to any museum, even the Louvre, I am looking for women representation. I am always like, how many women are here? And how many of them are brown? How many of them are queer? I know that in the last couple of years, programming has changed. The dynamics have changed. But at this capacity, I've never seen it at this capacity. The representation for POC folks, um, for queer folks. And so that makes me happy. Um, I hope this exhibit shifts some minds. I really want this exhibit to say, you know, put us on the map as a city of POC artists and, and queer artists. Oh, I hope they're just like, damn, San Antonio is cool. And I want this exhibit to say, the McNay is doing work like nobody else in San Antonio and everybody should jump on board.